Welcome, my lovely Libras, to your November 2024 reading. Um, this is going to be for Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising. You could certainly have plans in the sign of Libra. Uh, you may be in love with the Libra. I have a lot of Libra love in my life, platonically. Um, and remember, if you're here because you love a Libra for whatever reason, um, understand that your spirit guides know that you're here. Um, and I say that because I read through my spirit guides who then connect to your guides. That is why a single reading can mean so much to so many. Um, I feel like we're all soul connected. And honestly, when I'm doing a reading, in my mind's eye, you're all just sitting here with me. So I just want to let you know that. Um, I do want to give a couple shout outs, though. Uh, first to my nephew, Sean, who is right on the Virgo Libra cusp on um, September 24th. We just celebrate his birthday. Happy birthday. Um, matter of fact, happy birthday to a lot of you. I, I just realized, what is the date? Um, I'm doing this early because I'm taking a break. Um, not a long break, but a break. So I wanted to get November readings done and up to you before I took this break. You are my last reading, by the way. Um, but what was I going to say? So anyways, um, Sean is September 24th, S-E-A-N. Um, my beautiful granddaughter, Lily, just celebrated her birthday yesterday, October 14th. And my beautiful sister, who is now in heaven, um, it, her birthday is today. So in honor of my sister, Tracy, um, I bring you this reading. I, I know that she's always in your readings. I just always know that. I've known that for many years. Um, so anyways, yeah. Um, and I'm trying not to say um so much. Someone left me a comment like you say um too much. I know I do. Uh, whoop. Trying to, trying to break that habit. But anyways, so we're going to use a few different decks for um, November. I do want you to just please excuse the bandages on my hand. I was watching uh, the Stiller game and they were doing really well. I got excited and when I, I jumped up and down, when I came back down, I hit my hand right on the table. So, but willing to take it for the team. Uh, so anyways, we're going to use Mother Mary for her beautiful words of wisdom. But we're going to do this at the end of the reading. Normally I do it at the beginning of the reading, but this month I've just been called to do it at the end. We are going to use the Gilded Chirrell to clarify or go deeper. And deep we go. This is why the readings are longer um than most not i mean there are quite a few who do put long form videos out um but many, more short so i know i'm not everybody's cup of tea but what i i want to find you is real clarity and that does take time um for the main spread we are going to use the light seers tarot and by the way i'm also doing opposites again for november so I did Aries, which is your opposite. I actually just put it out. Um, so I'm curious now to do yours. Just, you know, and the reason why, well, I was intuitively guided to do it in the first place. But now I get it. Um, because, you know, when you think about it, our opposite sign um, is really, you know, it, it's like the, the other part of us. Um, like I'm a Virgo sun and my opposite is Pisces and boy, can I learn a lot from Pisces and Pisces can learn, learn a lot from Virgo. So that's one of the reasons why I'm doing it. Um, but I just feel like there are so many synchronicities. You did show up in Aries reading twice. So we'll see if Aries shows in your reading. We are also going to bring in the romance angels. If love comes um, to the table and it has in every reading so far. So, you know, I kind of expected in this one, but again, we'll use these if love comes to the table and we are using the major arcanas again. 
I use these for like bullet points. Um, I begin the reading with these and I shoot for like three to four cards, but I take whatever comes out. Sometimes they tell their own little story, but I feel like I just love the way that they relate back to like the main spread. So let's go ahead and begin. And let's begin with the major arcanas. So I'm going to give them a couple shuffles. Not the easiest to shuffle, but still possible. Let's give them a cut. go and let me just bring my chair up a little bit there we go okay let's bring the lid down and if you're ready Libra I'm ready so Libra and those are chiefly guided November. You know, I say November, but um, I feel like a reading will just find you. You'll find it in divine timing. So I don't even worry about that. I just, you know, I put a date and time more for you. Or so I can put it in a playlist. But again, November... They really want to shuffle up. We have the sun. Nice. It's always nice when the sun shows up in a reading. Um, because first of all, the sun's your illuminator. So there's nothing you need to fear when the sun comes out. Like shadows can't hide when the sun is out. The sun is really about feeling new again. You know, like a kid again bringing out that playful side of yourself. Um, it's interesting how I am noticing that there are twins. Of course, it could be the mirror images of each other, of the mirror image of one, of one, but it feels like they're twins. We have the devil, part of Capricorn. Um, the devil normally talks about temptation, you know, like tempted to illusionary type energy. But interesting again with the sun there, it's like if, if I'm trying to hide anything in the dark, it will also come to the light. Uh, but if anyone is trying to hide anything in the dark, it will come to the light. Some of you are just literally a Capricorn. So we have Leo and Capricorn. We have the Hermit. Card of Virgo. We have the Tower. Interesting mix of cards. And then we have the Moon. So we have the masculine and the feminine energy. Just out of these five cards. The Moon is the feminine, the sun is the masculine. Um, let me slide these over a little bit. The hermit's coming right in the middle of all this energy. So, uh, by the way, the moon, um, and, and I do think, I think the moon is in Aries right now. But anyways, the moon, Heart of Pisces, ruler of Cancer. Um, the moon is being mirrored by the sun. So again, anything done in the dark. You know, the, the thing with the moon is we can only see as far as the moonlight allows us to see. On a full moon, you can see much further, right? Um, on a new moon, not so much. Then we have this tower. But it's interesting because the hermit is is like putting it's almost like the like it almost feels like holy water like the hermit is like sprinkling holy water over this tower hmm you know the hermit to me it can represent like someone 
going through, let's just call it the dark night of the soul, difficult experience. Uh, the hermit is about reflecting over that, though, learning. You know, there there is there was a opportunity to learn. So whatever reason this tower happened, the hermit's going to figure it out for sure. And it is interesting. I don't know why. I don't think I've ever said this, but I feel like I feel like the hermit's like sprinkling holy water all over the tower. Hmm. Hermit also has his back to the devil. And the hermit is being shown emerging from a cave instead of going into the cave. So what I mean by that is I feel like, you know, the difficult, let's just say the difficult days, difficult nights, um, feel like they're coming to an end. The hermit with all the wisdom from the reflection, you know, that's what the hermit does, really reflects, um, looks for the wisdom within probably every situation, but at least the last chapter, let's say. Now, even though we have a little bit of difficult energy here, the sun still represents like a brand new day. So this feels like this is what's being put behind you. Some of you may be overcoming like some type of an addiction. Maybe you didn't think you could, but then you do. And good for you. I feel like there's a few of you who may have like kind of isolated yourself for a little while. You know, it's like I've removed myself from the world. Um, but I feel like I had to, like, I, I like, like I had to do that, um, just to survive. Interesting. You know, and then I feel whatever illusions the, de the devil is casting, the hermit has definitely picked up on that. So, you know, it's going from what feels like illusionary energy and sometimes dark energy um, but moving into the light, moving into the light. Some, I feel like there's a balance now between the masculine and the feminine. I wouldn't be surprised if there's a few here that are going through like a twin flame relationship. Or let's say a twin flame connection. All right, well, let's bring in the light seers. Well, another shuffle. That was chaotic shuffle. Much better. Much better. All right. Let's go ahead and begin. Wow, Ten of Pentacles. And look what came out with the Ten of Pentacles, the Four of Wands. Holy crap. Um, Ten of Pentacles, this is a house of abundance. You know, this is great energy if someone's working from home. You don't have to be working. This is also great energy if you're working in like a family business. But here's the thing with the Ten of Pentacles. I feel like this is energy that can truly take root. So whatever I'm doing in this energy, however, I'm finding this abundance. Maybe that's why the sun is out. It's like, ah, I'm seeing the fruits of my labor. Um, and then you have the four of wands next to that, which is the marriage card. Holy cow. And in the Ten of Pentacles, I never feel like someone's alone. I feel like you're with another, if not, you know, a family, blended families. That also gives me a clue that if let's just say anyone's coming into your life, whether foe or friend or love, um, I shouldn't have said foe because I don't feel that. Um, it makes me feel like they themselves 
would, let's just say, have a job. <laughs> okay. I have a feeling something's going to try to bring this energy down, but at this moment, how beautiful that the sun, you know, it's like illuminating your abundance, but it's also illuminating love, commitment. We have the Page of Swords. We have the Nine of Cups. Um, Nine of Cups is about inner harmony. But listen, it took me a while to get to this energy. Again, it's the Nine. But this is also about fulfillment of wishes. So it feels like, you know, some type of wish is going to come true. But maybe it was important that first that you, yourself, found this inner harmony. And I feel like you did that through the hermit's energy. Um, I also want to say with the page of swords there, if you just look at the image, it's like she's got this book open, right? But through this book, she's receiving all kinds of ideas, epiphanies. Um, you know, this can talk about... Uh, to me, a page can be like the energy that's in the atmosphere and be communication. But I feel this is more about you and you doing something, you know, maybe you using your own voice. Hmm, interesting. Something is inspiring you to create. And not only that, but I feel like I love it. Or let's say I haven't really moved into this energy yet, then it's signifying that you, that chances are you will love it. You know, it's interesting because the nine of cups is coming below the tower. And let's face it, the tower is not a joyful energy. The tower mean, usually means there's, there was some type of disruption in my life. Someone could have fallen from grace. I could have, my energy may have evolved. Like I may have been working. <clears throat> Maybe this is why, like, I feel like some of you, when I say isolated, I just mean like you put your head down and did your thing. And I feel like now you're starting to really see those benefits um, and in different ways. I kind of love the Page of Swords coming under the Hermit because the Hermit to me is a very spiritual energy, but also I feel like an old soul, but a wise old soul. So whatever I'm, whatever knowledge I'm seeking within the Hermit, first of all, it's showing that the Hermit has received it. And it feels like that changes the energy. Because again, I just feel like the hermit's putting holy water on that tower. Dang, tower. Tower. Under the moon. That's interesting. You know, um, some of you could be starting like a different, like a different job, or maybe you lost a job and you decided to work for yourself. I feel like if that's the case, I feel like you're going to do very well. Again, if you put the effort in, I feel like you'll see the fruits of your labor. And I don't feel like you have to wait, like, real long. Because, again, I feel like, like your spiritual team is feeding you with signs, epiphanies, ideas. And I feel like you're using them. You're taking them. And you're putting them into action.
Now, I also have to say, because I have to, I want to look at this from all sides. I have the Tower mirroring the Ten of Pentacles with the marriage card right there. For some of you, this could signify, you know, a relationship that was, that is no more. Um, and, you know, you may be in a single status now. But I don't feel like, listen, maybe at first, not really what I wanted. Maybe I didn't, you know, I didn't ask for it. But here's the thing. I feel like once I accepted it and I moved on from that, your guides were always connected to you. So they're helping you to create, I feel like, a different life almost. But I could definitely see where some could have been in a, you know, a committed relationship and it could have ended. We have the King of Swords, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. However, most of you know I don't really... I give you the sign, but then I don't really read it like where it has to be an air sign. It's probably you. You know what I love about this king? I love this image because I feel like this king has climbed a mountaintop like I've reached a mountaintop. And to me, that is something to celebrate. That's like a real accomplishment. I feel like what it does is it puts an end to, you know, anything that may have been difficult. And then we have the Three Cups. So the Three Cups is really about rejoicing and celebration. It's meant to bring joy to your heart. But I have to say it is mirroring the devil. So, you know, some of you may be questioning, like, let's, let's say that there is someone in your life, uh, whether new or old, you may be questioning, you know, this. Also, I want to say, I could definitely see this, like, tying back to, let's say, alcohol, you know, something, something to help get me through and, or someone else you know it could be someone else's energy like someone else dealing with some difficult things and so they drank a lot you know because again the devil is about temptations it is illusionary energy maybe it's what i think i need to get through so even though it's meant to bring joy i don't know why I feel like joy is on its way. I just don't feel like it's right there. Let's keep going. Hello, full. New beginning. You know, it kind of matches the sun's energy. Because to me, the sun does represent a brand new day. But the sun's come out. Again, playfulness. Um, you know, and just think about like when you were a kid. I think about like when I was like a young teen and I would get on my bike, you know, back in my generation. We didn't have cell phones or beepers or pagers, any of that stuff. <clears throat> so when you left the house, you know, it was, it was your parents really couldn't get a hold of you. Um, but w what I'm trying to point out is I just remember, you know, getting up in the morning, going on my bike and just feeling free, you know, though that, that was an illusion, right? Because I really wasn't free. I had an answer to my parents, but I felt free. So this is about a new beginning. I do like that it's mirroring the hermit. Because I feel like it means that you have the wisdom that you need to really be successful. And Page of Swords right above it. Again, receiving these ideas, these epiphanies. And potentially putting them to use. 
The fool wants you to take a leap of faith, but on yourself. So, after a period of reflection, and it does feel like spiritual reflection, um, and in receiving spiritual growth, it's time. Like, it's time for something new to open up now. I don't feel like the tower, even though we have it here twice, for some reason, I just don't feel like, I don't feel its energy. I don't feel it as like, oh my God, I don't even feel like it, I don't feel like it's current disruption. I feel like it's already happened. All right, well, there we go. Three of Wands. This is the energy of optimism. Three of Wands is about living in the present moment. And, I mean, just look at this person, right? She's about to go surfing. Doing something she loves. But really what this, this talks about is living in the present moment. And just saying to your guides, like, I know that you'll bring in my ships, my blessings. I know that they'll come in divine timing. In the meantime, I'm just going to try to find joy and happiness within my everyday life. It is coming under the Nine of Cups. So I do feel like, again, this tower It's probably why I didn't feel like the tower was really holding any power any longer. Because I feel like you've overcome it. You've overcame it. And I feel like now this is moving you into the energy of optimism. And how do I love that it's following the fold? We have the Four of Swords. Maybe that's why I didn't feel the tower was so such a big deal here. This is healing. This is healing. And what I love about this image, it looks like this person's nesting. That may, that may be why I felt like some of you just like you took a time out. But maybe you needed that time out. And there's nothing wrong with that. I like how this person has their heart outside themselves. So it's like healing my mind, my body, my soul. And my heart. Interesting. We have the Eight of Swords, but it's in reverse. And then look at this. The Ace of Pentacles. So, Eight of Swords. No power left to the towers. There just isn't. Because in the Eight of Swords, that's normally a self-created prison. That's where I'm building up walls, trying to protect myself through all these human actions. But because I feel like I went through the hermit's energy, I found spiritual clarity, or I'm on my way. Um, I'm, I'm realizing I don't need to put up these walls. And it serves me to not put these walls up. So when this person has that realization, to me, it's freedom. And maybe that's why I was talking about freedom earlier. Like it's, it's like you're freeing yourself. You're freeing yourself to allow yourself to experience what's next. What's new. Right? I climb one mountaintop. What's the next mountaintop hold? So you set yourself free and look what shows up, the Ace of Pentacles. Well, Ace of Pentacles means something that's coming into your physical world. Um, I often feel like it starts as a seed, but look at the roots connected. It tells you that this Ace can really take root. Um, I do feel like we do have to nurture this Ace. You know, it reminds me of like a garden and I plant seeds, which we should always be planting seeds. Um, But then we have to nurture those seeds. So this ace can really expand my world. Or I can ignore it and it can just dry up and kind of die. But I don't think you are. I think quite the opposite. I feel like you're coming 
It almost feels like you're coming from the dark night of the soul. Now the light has found you. I love the Ace of Pentacles also coming right by that fold. Taking a leap of faith with this Ace. And this Ace um, giving you a reason to be optimistic. You know, it definitely signifies that something or someone or both are coming into your physical world. I do feel like this king is you, male or female. And I feel like it's you who has been in this healing period. And what have you been healing? You're healing over these towers. Again, things that just didn't go your way. <laughs> Can be like, you know, someone who broke up with you. It could be like a job loss. It could be all of the above. But that feels like that was one chapter. And now we're about to open up a new chapter. I have a feeling we're going to get the world card somewhere. I Because I, I feel that energy. Let's see what's on the bottom of the deck. Nine of Wands. All right. So remember, nines are about reflection. Um, but it really is about final reflection. In a Nine of Wands, this is someone who's just looking back. Let's just say at the last chapter, because we do run in nine year cycles. Let's just say I'm just looking at the last cycle. This is me looking back, not to judge myself, but really to see how much I have grown. You know, even through the hardships, the, the unexpected towers, all that type of energy, even if I've lost a job, lost a person. Um, this is really about coming out stronger than you've ever been. You know, this person's clothes are like busting off. And I and that's because they're gaining spiritual muscles. You know, and once you have that, nobody can take that away from you. All right. Let's bring in the Guild of Tarot. I feel like I'm going to put this here and this here. Let's give them a shuffle. Well, hello, lovers. Let's give them a cut. And let's start at the beginning, but read it as a whole. So we're looking at the sun. With the Ten of Pentacles underneath it. And the King of Swords underneath it. And again, that King of Swords, I feel it was you. And I feel it's like a certain mountaintop that you've reached after the fact. Like after these towers, you still reach your mountaintop. You know, you set yourself free from from any limited thinking, limited ideas, um, even like words that other people told you, you know, on like, you can't be successful or no one's going to love you, which is just, we know, all bullshit. You know what I mean? But we do take it on sometimes. But I don't, I don't feel that you're taking it on anymore. We have the Page of Wands. I like that a lot, Ever the Sun. Um, of course, it can represent you know, a younger fire sign. However, I do call this page my risk taker. This is someone to me who, you know, doesn't live life. Um, or, or let me put it a different way. Doesn't allow fear to like get in their way. 
uh, taken chances in their life. And not all of them work out. I mean, that's just the way it is. But I feel like in the page of Wands energy, this is someone who learns like how to get back up again. You know, so I probably maybe been knocked down twice. You got two towers. But it looks like you're getting back up again. Mm, okay. I get knocked down, but I get up again. I know that's not how it goes. There's a song. I get knocked down. I feel like, but I get up again. We have the two of swords coming over the devil. I'm like, wait a minute, mister. It's also coming over the four of wands. Interesting. You know, it's interesting because you do have quite a few of the same cards that Aries had, that Ari had. And, um, Though I'm not even I'm not even sure why I said that. Um, but okay, so the two swords, that's where someone's got a blindfold on. Just maybe something I don't want to face. It could be a current relationship. You know? Um and you know, even relationships that are not so great doesn't mean it's always easy to leave, right? It means I got to change my life. But in the two swords, there is something you don't want to face. But I promise you, it's worth facing. Because otherwise, I feel like, how can I have change if I don't face what's ever in front of me? You know, it's not the eight of swords. So it's not a self-created prison. But it literally just feels like there's something I don't want to face. Now, <clears throat> again, because it's coming over the devil. And the devil represents temptation. It could, again, talk about whether it's me, myself, where, you know, maybe I've been drinking too much or someone else. You know, like someone else doing something. It's either someone else or it's yourself. Um, but I feel like I've got to face the fact. I've got to face the fact. We have the wheel. Destiny. Over the hermit. Well, yeah. Uh, the wise old soul. We have the six of wands. That's the energy of being victorious. The meaning of the card is victory and success. Victory and success. You know, what I love about this, this energy is I feel like this is where other people are really looking up to you due to action steps you yourself have taken. You know, something is definitely changing here. Even though, again, that two of swords where I may not want to face something, I feel like you must, you must have faced it. Um, and maybe that's why the Eight of Swords is reversed back here. You know, it's setting oneself free. And it makes sense that it came out with the Ace of Pentacles. You know, it's like one door closes, boom, here the Ace gives you an opportunity for the next door to open. And, you know... I could see some of you using some of your past knowledge, some of your the wisdom that you've gained from your experiences and using them in your everyday life. You know, again, whether I do it like a business, you know, um, all the Libras in my life are very creative and they're all musicians. And the only reason I'm bringing that up is because it reminds me of like writing down my sorrows like in the lyrics or poems or even just journaling, like getting it outside of my body. 
But anyways, this is where other people are admiring you for the action steps that you've taken. And it is you reaching ultimate success. And then we have the Hierophant card of Taurus. Um, it is a number five. To me, fives stand for change. So, you know, if there's change that needs to happen within the Hierophant, I feel like then what it's asking me to do is just ask myself, you know, do I still keep hope alive? Is my faith still alive? Am I living life according to my terms, my beliefs? Or have I, have I been living someone else's life? You know, accepting things that I just can no longer accept. You know, it definitely is showing you evolving. And I feel like if others cannot evolve with you, then naturally, it's just a natural energy of then that fading away. Now, sometimes we don't want this energy to fade away, but if it's not good for us, that's where, you know, I feel like that's where that blindfold is. Hmm. Interesting, we have the wheel, which is your destiny. Coming over the hermit, which is, to me, a wise old soul. This hermit is emerging from the cave. You know, the hermit carries a beacon of light. And that beacon of light is, is for the hermit's own use, but also for others. You know what I mean? Like, the hermit, I feel like the hermit's beacon of light helps illuminate any snakes in the grass. For oneself, but for I feel like for some of you... You're also helping others to see it, realize it. Because again, other people are looking up to you. All right, let's keep going. I don't know if I said to hire them, it's also the card of Taurus. Hello, Nine of Pentacles. Um, the meaning of this card is successful self-employment. This is also about reaping the benefits of your own hard work. Very independent type energy. It is the card of Virgo. Um, and it's interesting because it's over the Eight of Swords but really connected to that Ten of Pentacles. So I'm just getting this feeling that I had the Ten of Pentacles, lost the Ten of Pentacles. Now, when I, when I say I lost it, I just mean something happened within that energy. I do feel like um, some of you became single, but... And listen, maybe you, you you became single and you took some time out just to reflect on your own life. And um, I love that you not only have the Nine of Pentacles, which again is, you know, you reaping the benefits of your own hard work. And here's this Ace of Pentacles. You had this Ace of Pentacles to the Nine of Pentacles. Well, maybe we're just recreating the Ten of Pentacles, but in a different light. But it does kind of make me feel that, you know, a relationship could have come to an end. But here's the thing. Where the relationship energy is, it's not easy. Um, again, there's a blindfold. There's temptation. There may be drinking. You know, there may be a lot of things going on. It's just not the way I want to live my life anymore. 
And that may be what the hyphen is saying. Like you really have questioned, you know, like where have I been putting my own energy? Is it been working out for me? You know, we have two towers, so, hmm. you know, but can I, can I recoup what I've lost? But in a different way, the answer is yes, absolutely. And, you know, with the wheel here, it, sometimes we got to realize that even the hardships that we go through were meant to happen. Um, matter of fact, I feel like that's where our soul really finds the most growth. And I feel like that is coming through the hermit's energy again. You know, and again, that hermit, it's final reflection. Mirrored by the full, ready to have this new beginning. All of it part of your destiny. So there's nothing on the table that's happened that wasn't meant to happen. Now, I know not everybody likes that. You know what I mean? Um, but I do believe that. Like, I I feel like our souls learn more from the difficult experiences. And then I love where I see this often where we're taking the wisdom of our past and then helping others, whether we do it for a living. You know, you have the four of swords here, like whether you just become this healer. Um, and when I say healer, I mean that in a million different ways. Like I could be a nurse. I could be a doctor. I could I could do Reiki. I could read Tarot, you know. Um, I could write songs, but, you know, that have a spiritual tone to them. could write a book and if that's the case it feels like more of like a self-help type of book <clears throat> you know no matter what you've been through it's still showing you the promise of this new day and all that it offers all right let's keep going and I like that the Nine of Pentacles is coming directly over you also. All right, we have the Ten of Wands in really one of the most difficult lines here. And then look at this, the Chariot. So, Ten of Wands. Connected to the Devil, connected to the Two Swords, the Four of Wands, and the Three of Cups. Ten of Wands, to me, you know, I, I often feel in the Ten of Wands subconsciously bring me a tower. You know, there's something that I've been going through where all the responsibility has been on my shoulders. And it's too much. It's too much. I do want to say, just be careful, like, with drinking. And I don't know why I keep picking that up. And it may not be you. It may just be someone else. And it's like, I don't want to deal with that anymore. But anyways, I do feel like in the Ten of Wands, this is energy I do want to come to an end. And maybe that, again, is the blindfold. Maybe that does mean that by this coming to an end, something else has to come to an end. And again, even if we know that that's the best thing for us, it doesn't make it easy. That's life. But I like, I like the promise that follows it, and that is of the full, right? A brand new day. Um, you know, it's about a new beginning and taking a leap of faith. And the full with the page of swords right above it, where I feel like, you know, it's idea, epiphanies, all, you know, signs, guidance, and it's all on your wheel. And then you get the chariot over the full. So, yes, it feels like what's ever here, take off the blindfold. Understand that sometimes even a difficult change can really change your whole life for the better. Because then we move into the chariot. And we do have the masculine and the feminine energy. And in the chariot's um, 
energy, I do feel like it's the balance between the feminine and the masculine. I really feel it's within ourselves, you know, and then also remember the chariot is driven by your intentions. Well, that's why I love this page, like just receiving all these epiphanies, you know, planting seeds in the chariot. It becomes truly unlimited potential. I may not know that from the get-go, but it's just saying take a leap of faith. Take a chance. Try to do it with an optimistic view if you can. Understand what you have learned, how much you have grown from that. And yes, yeah, sometimes that does mean that certain people need to fade away. Um, chariot's also a card of cancer, by the way. But how beautiful to have the chariot right underneath the wheel. It tells me that that wheel is moving. You know, the two swords before the wheel could have like, it's almost like putting a wedge in that wheel. Like where it's not moving. But that has to do again with the blindfold. Um, but yet I feel like all you got to tell yourself is if I've been in a situation where, again, everything was on my shoulders <clears throat> and maybe something didn't want to admit it, you know what I mean? And it, it just feels like it became too much. We have the six of pentacles, six and six. 66, root 66. It's funny I said that because I live in the East Coast and Route 66 goes to the West Coast. And in the Three of Wands, it almost feels like she's at the West Coast about to go surfing. Six of Pentacles is a very empathetic and compassionate type energy. You know, it could talk about that, let's just say a previous relationship, whether it be a work relationship or a love relationship or even a family. Um, it, uh, it, I have a feeling that what this is saying is I had to learn that fine art of give and take, you know, um, you are so loving that I can see you giving and giving and giving, but are you, are you receiving? Do you know what I mean? Because you should receive, it should be equal. In the six of pentacles, I often feel like we want to help the underdog, but by helping the underdog, am I really helping them? Or am I just, you know, it's almost like, um, let's say someone is tempted to a certain type of energy and um, I keep giving it to them. Am I helping or am I hurting? Well, you're not helping you. So that's really what it's about, learning who deserves my help and who doesn't? Again, the Six of Wands, I feel like this is you talking about it. Six of Pentacles is not. I think I said Six of Wands. Six of Wands is above the Six of Pentacles. Eight of Wands. Fast moving energy. You know what it feels like as soon as we make a decision to jump into the Fool's energy. As soon as we say, you know what, I am going to allow myself to have a new beginning. Whatever that may signify to you. Because, again, it may be in a relationship, and it may be what you do for a living, or it could be both. 
This is definitely the energy of what I think about, I bring about. And I love that it's coming over the Ace of Pentacles. So if I've been thinking about this Ace. I've been wanting this Ace to come in. And I love the Hierophant right above it. Because to me that represents the light. So what I think about, I bring about. And here I am bringing this Ace of Pentacles to me. But then it moves quickly. You know, is that a blessing or a curse? I guess it depends where you're at. Um, but boy, do I kind of love that the Eight of Wands is coming over the Ace of Pentacles that's mirrored over here by the Nine of Pentacles. Again, you, your money, your success, and it's coming over the reversal of the Eight of Swords, you're setting yourself free. You're on to bigger and better things. And if you're asking, like, can I be successful? As long as you're willing to put your focus, you know, let's say on your pentacles, then yes, definitely you're going to grow them. Um, I definitely feel like success is going to be yours. It just, it sits upon your will. It's like you're meant to be successful. But I do have to allow myself to be successful at the same time. And listen, as your success starts to grow, as your spirituality starts to grow, again, the energy of those and just anything that is not evolving with you naturally is going to fade away. This time, I feel like we have to allow it because I feel like we probably pulled it back in before. But this time, Let's try to allow it just to fade away. You know, the chariot over the full. I love that because it is really saying that you have unlimited potential. You just have to know that. You have to believe in yourself. And then the wheel. So whatever you're doing past this point, it's, well, I feel like all of it was your destiny. You know, like I, I wanted to learn certain lessons, maybe so I could then create a business. And maybe the, how, you know, the reason why I can be so successful, especially if I'm trying to help others, is because I've been there. I've walked your shoes. All right, let's go right below. There's the emperor. There's your opposite. Um, but listen, coming into the nine of pentacles, it could certainly talk about owning your own business and really being successful at it. You know, the emperor is someone we look up to. The emperor is someone who's methodical, um, but also compassionate and empathetic. This is someone who is a great leader of the people. And I do feel like this is you, unless you're connected to an Aries. I feel like this is you. So I feel like, you know, let's say your job changed. And probably wasn't easy, right? Change is not easy, even if it's a good change. I feel like this reading is just trying to let you know that you can have true success. You just have to go after it. Um, I can't say, I don't want to say anything negative about this emperor because he is mirroring the sun. And honestly, I feel this emperor is more about you and your success in the world. You know, you may have put your career on the back burner. And now, and now it feels like, mm, I don't want to do that anymore. I want to start thinking about me and my life and what can I create in my life. I've probably given other people plenty of my time, but now it's about what can I do with my life. 
where there's the world, which I knew was going to show up. And I have to say, I love the line that it's showing up in. So where I feel like the most difficult energy lies, the world now shows up, which talks about the next chapter, a new chapter opening up. And by the way, in the world's energy, I do feel like you are very spiritual. Like you really trust within your spirituality, your spiritual team, signs, guidance. Um, you know, if you feel something within your intuition, you now trust that. I feel like it is saying goodbye to someone. You know, it's like, mm, it's over. And, uh, you know, again, I'm not going to say it's easy. But I am going to say that it feels worth it. <clears throat> then we have the Four of Cups. So, Four of Cups talks about discontentment and boredom in one's life. Now, it's coming over the Fool, but also the Chariot and the Wheel and the Hermit. Um, but next to the world. So, there's something that I'm not satisfied with in my life anyway. So, in the Four of Cups, there's this cup coming in. And to me, this cup is being handed to you from God, from divine. And this is really about learning to use your spiritual discernment, relating, do I want to accept this cup or not? You know, a lot of times you'll see in the Four of Cups, a person's not even looking at this cup. This person sees the cup. Just have to make a decision. Right? Do I want to let this wheel now turn? Am I going to accept this cup? I feel like you are. Now, it can talk about love. It can talk about just the love of your life again. Like loving life again. Because again, I feel like you're on this fast track to success. Like the world is that cup. Hello, lovers. Hello, lovers. Um, card of Gemini. The meaning of this card is a head over heart decision. You do have this cup coming in from the four of cups. Asking you to use your spiritual discernment. You know, what I love about this image is, you know, it's funny how I even opened this reading saying that we have both the masculine and the feminine's energy here. And that's what I feel also in the lover's energy. You know, you can see the feminine's energy and it's like she's feeling, it can feel the masculine's energy, even though he's not here in person yet. Interesting how I said, yeah. And then we have the Seven of Wands. Seven of Wands is about standing your ground. Just a weird place for it to come out. Um, can be the energy also of like putting out other people's fires. But listen, maybe that's what you now do. Maybe that's exactly what you do now. You help put out other people's fires. Your experiences have taught you well. And now you're helping to teach others. And again, it doesn't even have to mean that. I do feel like for a lot of you, you're doing it in your everyday job. You, if nothing else, you're bringing your spirituality to the table. You know, this ace could come out and someone else may have their hand out. 
And if that's the case, then I feel like then that means this energy hasn't been cleared. Because this ace is meant for you. And it is meant to expand your world. That's what this ace is about. It's soul expansion. So, again, it can take true root, like really root itself and really blossom. I think I want to look. Oh, sorry about that. I know some of you were headphones. I want to look at that seven of wands because it just doesn't feel unless it's what you're doing. It doesn't feel right. Three of wands. So second time we see the three of wands. So this is a positive energy. Maybe some of you are helping others to realize that they themselves have ships coming in. They themselves have blessings. But, you know, maybe you're teaching them like how to read energy and to think about their own energy. I kind of, I do kind of feel like this is you helping others, like helping to put out their fires. So I feel like there's nothing to fear here. All right. What do I want to look at? You know, you have a few difficult cards, but mainly your cards are light are abundant. Um, definitely new beginnings here. But it's after a period of time where I feel like I, I do feel like you must be ready for this. Because again, discontentment, boredom. But yet here comes this cup next to the world, right? The next chapter. But I feel like I do have to accept that cup which means I got to jump in the fool's energy and be willing at least to take a leap forward. And that moves us into the lover's energy. Six, six, six. Now it kind of relates back to the devil, but not in an angel number. Hmm. All right. I just want to come up and look at that two of swords. See, what is that blindfold? Though I kind of know. We have the Knight of Wands. It's like you're shutting out passion. But it's coming in anyway. I feel like the Knight of Wands comes in whether I ask for it or not. Then we have the King of Cups. King of Cups can be Cancer, Scorpio, or Pisces. We have Scorpio, I'm sorry, we have Cancer and Pisces on the table. But, you know, it doesn't have to mean any of that. You know, you could have been dealing with someone who um, maybe in the beginning was like very loving. But for whatever the reason, it feels like things turned. And I know this is not this part is not for everyone, but I know it is for a few of you out there. So I feel like you were connected to someone who, you know, could have started off like all loving and giving and what have you, but then took a turn or someone like revealed who they truly were. And it's like, wait a minute, you're not who I thought you were. Well, the devil's great at casting illusions. And if I don't take that blindfold off, do I not then fall for that illusion? In a way, I feel like I do. And this Knight of Wands seems to be like, like, like fresh air coming in to sweep out the old and bring in the new. Okay, so I feel like that is talking about a relationship. 
All right, let's just come right down. I'm going to look at the world with the Four of Cups, the Fool, and the Lovers. Which, by the way, all sits on your wheel, which means it's your destiny. You know, you do have free will, though. You don't have to say yes to everything that comes your way. But I feel like if I'm saying no, it's one of two things. I'm either, you know, like I don't feel like I want to invite this energy back. I feel like it's done. It's over with. You've taken it as far as you can take it. All right. So we have the moon. Again, card of Pisces, ruler of Cancer. But the moon can certainly speak of uncertainties. But really what I feel like it's speaking about here, especially because we're also looking at the full, you know, it can be very dreamy energy. Truly dreamy energy. Especially with the sun here. Like, this can just feel very, very dreamy. Um, But I also feel like it's saying that Sometimes we got to be comfortable without knowing exactly where something's going to end. Because maybe the journey is really what it's all about. I feel like some of you, this cup's coming in. And I do feel a little hesitation. But I feel like, you know, if I ask my guys, like, okay, let's say this is relating to love. Because we do have the lovers here. So let's say this is relating to love. And I ask my guides, you know, is this going to be good for me? You should feel that pretty quickly. Because I do feel like it's going to be good for you. Um, but if you would say to your guides, but... I need to know what the final outcome is going to be. Your guides would say to you, but that's up to you, my dear, because it's the seeds that you plant that determine what your future is going to look like. You know, it's like think back in Aries energy. That's when we're really, you know, that's the seed planter. And if we plant no seeds, well, then we have no harvest. We have the Queen of Cups. And we have the Nine of Wands. So we had the, we had the King of Cups. I did take him away. Um, but he was coming over such difficult energy that I didn't really want to leave him on the board anymore. I felt like this is someone who you did give time to. You did give a chance to. Maybe multiple times. And... Um, I do feel like it's over. And now we have this queen. So, you know, you have these two nines, which can certainly speak about singular energy. But then she's looking right at that nine of wands, which we have in the bottom of the deck. Again, I'm looking just my part. You know, like, I feel like in the Nine of Wands, I'm really learning about who I am. And really, it's about your strength. You know, the spiritual muscles you have gained due to the experiences you've been through. So it's not like putting blame on yourself. Like, what was I thinking? What was I thinking? Maybe you were meant to learn, right? Because again, the wheel, to me, everything here is part of your destiny. All right, but I don't feel like we're done yet. And I am going to bring out the romance angels. 
Because I do feel like love is part of this. We have the four of swords again healing. And look what's it's healing. The ten of swords. Beautiful. We definitely want to heal the ten of swords. You know, and the ten of swords with the nine of wands. This is not to judge you. But I, in this energy, I feel like Maybe what I'm realizing is I do give people a lot of chances. And I'm the one who keeps taking the daggers. Like I help, they hurt. But healing here again, this is the second time. So one may talk about healing over you know, just life and things that we've lost and can be jobs, money, any of that. But I feel like another one is speaking about your heart and the healing of your heart. But I feel like it is important that I realize that maybe I do have the tendency to take these daggers. You know, it, it can certainly talk about a repeat pattern. And I get that I don't want to repeat a certain pattern. But if I know myself, which is really what the Nine of Wands is about, really knowing oneself, then I feel like the chances of me ending up in the same type of unfulfilling, let's say, type of relationship are very slim. Okay, let's pick this up and let's bring out the Romance Angels. I think it's the perfect time for them. Look what's on the bottom of this deck, the Four of Wands. You know, interesting because I do feel like one connection probably came to an end. And maybe it's been like it's been over for a little while. Um, but though I don't feel that for everyone. I feel like what this is this is trying to give you some comfort, letting you know that you will find this love. You will find this true commitment. Um, and I do feel like it's coming through the lover's energy. Remember that we're really, we were looking at the world, right? Which is the next chapter. And in that next chapter, a cup is being offered to you. And it's asking you to use your spiritual discernment. But it also sits on your wheel and then opens the lover's. So I feel like, you know, the days of having a truly loving, committed relationship are not over. Just maybe with one person. Or even multi, you know, it could just be like the way I've been in love. And now I'm learning about myself and I know who I am. I understand what it is I deserve. I know that if I want success, that I got to plant those seeds. But if I plant those seeds, then success I will have. I also feel that in love, you know, I do need to be able to open my heart to it. I mean, you don't have to. You can say no. But I feel like your spiritual team is like, but we don't want you to say no. All right, let's bring out the romance angels. And I really don't want to look back. I want to look forward. Of course, I try not to put any expectations. And I want them to come out the way they're, they, you know, they want to come out. So let's just look at the lovers. Someone from your past is returning to your life. Interesting. Again, we have the masculine behind the feminine. Worth waiting for. Divine timing is at work in your love life. Worth waiting for. 
So, some of you already know. But listen, that can talk about past lives also. Um, and I say that because I do a lot of past life readings. Let's see if anything else wants to come out over that. I like that it says divine timing is at work in your love life. And that may relate to this four cups. You know, do I accept that cup? Or do I not? Well, hello, soulmate. Now I feel like we're going to accept that cup. Yes, this is your soulmate. This is your soulmate. This will not your soulmate. Maybe a karmic. Interesting because Aries reading, I think I literally named it. A karmic is returning. Well, how do I say that? It was it was about a karmic love trying to ask for another chance, though they had plenty of chances. And it also talked about someone new coming in. And I just said, which one are you going to feed? So this is new. We know it's new because it's following the world, right? The next chapter. It's also following the full present moment. And then the willingness to take a leap of faith for this cup. It is a soulmate. And divine timing is bringing this together. I also love the Six of Pentacles above it because, you know, Six of Pentacles is really learning that fine art of give and take. But it is because one is compassionate and empathetic and, you know, I naturally want to help people. But maybe what I'm learning now is instead of just giving handouts to people that just use them and abuse them, now I want to give hands up. I want to make sure who I give to that I'm helping to raise them up. You know, you also have a lot of synchronicities like two towers, two nines, um, both singular energy. We saw the four of what was on the bottom of the deck, that four of wands kind of hidden, right? And maybe that's the way it was meant to be. Okay. So we know it's a soulmate. Keep an open mind. Your soulmate, well, okay. Your soulmate may differ from your usual type and expectations. That may be a good thing. You know, it reminds me of my daughter who has a tendency to date the same sign over and over at different people. But the same sign and each and every time it turns out the same way. I said, maybe you need to start looking at different types of people. You know, someone that you normally and what I and you know what I feel what I really meant was maybe sometimes I don't need that initial attraction. Mm, not sure if that's what I mean to say. Anyway, let's not read too much into this. So anyways, it's just it's just signifying that this soulmate is different than um, your normal type. But here's the thing. I feel like that may be a good thing, especially if you felt like you kept getting pulled back into like people who have lower vibrational energy. <clears throat> and you yourself now have evolved. It's showing us that like you have evolved you said enough is enough, you know, you freed yourself, you put your walls down. The only thing left is taking that blindfold off, just being completely honest with yourself. Allow that will to spin because look at what it's what it's producing. For The first thing that follows that will is the nine of cups, inner harmony, but also fulfillment of wishes. And then you have the nine of pentacles, independent success strong on my own two feet. 
Now that, to me, makes the perfect time to then fall in love. All right, one more time around, and I'm just, I'm looking at the wheel. Look at this, engagement. Your love life is ascending to a higher level of commitment. Engagement. Well, what happened? Where'd my four of wands go? Oh, I put, I put the old cards on top. Where's that four of wands? Okay. I just want you to look at this real quick. So your love life is ascending to a higher level, sitting right over the wheel. Well, we already know it's a soulmate energy. Um, and that's probably why where it says someone from your past is returning. It doesn't have to be someone that you already know in this lifetime. But you're a soulmate, so there will be a familiar, you know, you the energy will be familiar. <clears throat> you know what I mean? Like, it's, that, it's kind of like that energy of like, mm, I feel like I've known you like my whole life. It's because you're on the same vibration also. But anyways, so we get engagement, right? With the wheel, we have marriage or commitment. But because it says engagement, let's just say marriage. But let's look under that. Look at this. The Knight of Cups, an unexpected cup of fulfillment. Sitting right under this Four of Wands. And then the Four. All right. Um, let's take Mother Mary over the reading. You know, I feel like Libra. Let's just say you're not the same person you were a year ago. And it may just be a month ago. But I'm just saying a year to give, you know, to add some time in there. But this reading, wow, not only is it talking about, like, success for you, like, really, success and inner harmony. I mean, you just put those two things together and just leave love out of it for, for a minute. Whew, I want to enjoy that for a moment. And then, lo and behold, here's the world, right? The next chapter. The fool saying, will you take a leap of faith? You know, take a chance. And then we have a soulmate. And then it says it's worth waiting for. And divine is divine timing is working in your love life. And then we jump up to engagement right over the wheel. Your love life is ascending to a higher level of commitment, which pulls us back to that four of wands again. So I feel like the really what this is saying is, of course, there's times in our lives where we we feel like we, we're losing. But then there's times in our lives where we are winning. And that's what I feel for you. I feel like you're moving into a period of time where, you know, I feel like years from now, you'll look back at this, you know, whenever this opens for you. And I feel like you'll never forget it because it really is life changing. Oh my gosh. Marriage. Wow. Some of my Libras are getting married. It's funny. Um, as soon as I said that, I was thinking of my nephew, Sean, who just proposed to his girlfriend not too long ago. So, and he's a Libra. And they're going to be getting married. I make a commitment to a healthy relationship with God, myself, and my partner. Marriage. Come on. Libra. You know, 
it just couldn't be any clearer. I say that because I read so much. So for me, it's very clear. It may not be that clear to you yet. This may be one of those type of readings where you listen to it the first time with your human ears and then things start evolving and you come back and you listen to, you listen to it with your spiritual ears and you hear the messages in a different way. And I, and I truly feel that's true. Um, and when I do personal readings, I always tell them, you know, listen to this reading more than once and keep it in your back pocket. Um, I mean, personal readings are like two hours long. So we really go into detail. Um, but I do, I tell them to keep it in their back pocket because as things start to evolve, revisit the reading and you're going to hear new messages. That's just the way our spiritual team works. You know what I mean? Um, and I kind of feel that for you too. Man, is your love life ascending to a higher level? But so are your finances. Like this feels like this may be the best. And listen, it's November, yes. But I feel like this is just the beginning. This is just the beginning. You know, rip off any blindfolds and just be completely open and honest with yourself. And, you know, if you know that there's some changes you should make, this is saying try to make them because there's a lot, there's a lot of life left. There's a lot of life left. And, you know, the things that you have lost, I'm telling you, you're not even going to think about them because of the energy you're now gaining. And I do feel like this is going to be one big pinnacle in your life that you will never forget. You know, whenever it happens for you. And I, yes, I'm talking about love, but I'm also talking about your finances. You know, what a perfect time to fall in love when I'm feeling strong on my own. They're feeling strong on their own. Both come to the table in that energy it doesn't mean we're perfect because nobody's perfect but i'm not this person that's for sure that's for sure okay i think i'm going to leave it there um you know it's interesting because i always feel like the last reading of the month is usually the best reading and Although there was some difficult energy, as we evolve through that and let that fade away, what a beautiful reading this turns out to be. Abundance in your money and in your love. What more could I want? What more could I want? I love you guys. Truly. I love you. I thank you. Um, can't wait to read your comments. I know there's going to be people in different parts of this reading. And that's what I love. That's why I love your comments. Because those who, let's say, have already cleared this energy, your experiences can help others. You know what I mean? Um, I feel like that's how we, use, we should use the comment section. Like, yes, I, I definitely want to know your... Um, point of view on the reading but also again if you've overcome certain things if you don't mind sharing I mean you certainly don't have to um, but sharing that information I feel like you help heal people and I know a lot of times you don't even know that but I know that um, and I feel like that's just good karma you know and karma comes back to you let's create good karma Let's get this wheel spinning in a very positive, light way and just watch. Just watch what already sits upon this wheel. And it is now moving. I feel like the only wedge of that wheel is the blindfold of the two of swords. As soon as I take off that blindfold, I'm pulling out that wedge and the wheel starts moving again. You're ready. I know you are. Um, and some of you, I feel like 
in the near future, you're going to be saying in one of my readings, guess what, Sandy? I got engaged. I got married. I met my soulmate. I started my own business. You know, I feel like there's going to be all kinds of good things. And um, boy, I couldn't be happier for you. All right, guys, I love you. I thank you. And I will see you next time at our table. Sorry about my yucky hand. Love you.